Today, we check out the LEGO Star Wars at -AT. Now, from what I've heard, this is the best at, -AT so far, so today we'll see if it lives up to the hype. largest Lego set we've ever reviewed on this channel is the Lego Star Wars at, -AT. and this thing is massive. You can see compared to the other boxes I've had in front of me, this kit is super big. You can see that especially with the little figures going up it and just playing around with it, and you can see one snow trooper with the e-web cannon and another one on an imperial speeder bike, and on the back we can see all of our features, and it looks like we've got tons of cargo room. So with that said, let's go into the unboxing. So to get into the box, luckily we do not have any thumb tabs, so I can save this box because it has awesome art. So I'm going to use this knife to just cut the little tape here and back here. And now that we're done with that, we can put that off to the side. So in the box, we will find bag of parts number six. Looks like we've got some pink in there. Wonder where that's gonna go. Bag of parts number seven. Bag of parts number five. Bag of parts number two. There's a lot of parts in these bags. Maybe the biggest instruction manual I've ever had. It's so big it's got its own bag. We've got here bag of parts number eight. We've got bag of parts number four. There's a lot of bags in this set. Bag of parts number one, we get our little brick separator. And now that my arm has disappeared in the bag, in the box, we've got bag of parts number three. And over here, <laughs> we've got bag of parts number eight. So I guess this is a little bit of bag of parts number eight. And I suppose our, our stickers are in the instructions bag. So let's get into the build. Now that we're finally finished, and I say finally because this thing took me about five to six hours to build, and I don't think I'm the fastest builder in the world, I think I'm kind of right in the middle, but it still took me a really long time. This thing is full of parts, and you can just see inside that it is just full of stuff, especially in this front section here, it's full of Technic builds, or Technic structure rather, and it's very, very dense with the parts. And this thing was a really fun build and kind of nostalgic from watching the original Empire Strikes Back when I was a wee little lad. And the instruction manual, I actually had a little mistake, or I think it was a mistake from Lego. Actually, no, it was a mistake. It was just misbound and misprinted, so the words kind of go off of the page and you may have seen me use my phone in the earlier part of the build and that is because on lego.com you can actually get the instructions for your kit so I just looked up 75288 on their website and they gave me the instructions for it for free and you don't have to talk to anyone it's just super easy to get and that came in handy right now so let's take a closer look 
Here is the AT-AT all close up and starting with the head you can see that the guns, the side guns are actually bigger than the main cannons and one thing that's really cool about the main cannons that the side guns do not have is the spring loaded shooters. To use them you just kind of pinch at the bottom and you just kind of go one at a time and it's a really cool feature and they're so close to the actual main cannons of the AT-80 that it just looks super cool and they're nice and hidden underneath the head. Speaking of the head, let's take a closer look at that. Taking a even closer look at the head, you can immediately notice its squinty little eye or it's actually a windshield in the Star Wars universe but it just looks really, really cool represented with these Lego pieces and I think Lego has just nailed the overall design and I just really, really love this kit. Now on the side you'll notice the iconic curve of the AT-AT's head as well as the little bump on top of what in this model is the uh, cockpit hatch but you can also see the little armor plating on the side of the guns and all like everything about this cockpit is just very very nice including those little vent pieces on either side just I think they've really really nailed the shape of the cockpit and all of the little details. Now on the top there are just some Technic pieces and that kind of transitions us back to the neck and you can see that we have a much more rigid connection so we can actually swivel the head and it actually stays and that's pretty cool but if you want to look the head even further over it does have a little connection back at the body which is a very nice addition and adds to the accuracy to I'm gonna say the actual AT-ATs but really just the AT-ATs from the Star Wars universe now the neck is represented with these three huge Technic steering wheel pieces and in Empire Strikes Back that was actually kind of a hallway there was like a tube that would connect the head to the body and in this you can't actually put any figures in there it's just kind of suggested and I think it would have to be pretty huge in order for them to actually have the little hallway in there. Now it also has a little rubber piece in there so that you can just kind of let go of the head and it will always center itself and if we center up the head that way then we'll be able to just kind of show that and just move it around and it will always return. Now at first I thought that was kind of gravity fed but then I realized while building it that it is indeed a little rubber piece that you are bending when you move it. First we got to get into the cockpit. Now to do that it's as simple as just opening up the lid and that is actually on two different hinges so you can kind of push it back like a convertible car and it's pretty cool but I'm just going to open it like this for better visibility. Now you can see that we actually have three figures in the cockpit which is very accurate to Empire Strikes Back and it is the first time we've actually gotten two AT-AT -AT drivers and General Veers in the cockpit. Now inside we actually have some little control panels and those are prints. Speaking of prints, this set actually has zero stickers. For 1267 pieces I was amazed that there were no stickers and it was very nice to build a kit that was purely just brick built detail and no stickers at all except for the little prints inside of there which aren't stickers but I just mentioned that because they are not brick built. Now closing that up, let's take a closer look at the side and the interior of the side. Taking a look at the side, you can see all of its many, many details, starting off at the back with these little exhaust pipes that is on the other side, and the AT-AT is actually basically mirrored to the other side, so everything you see here is on the other side as well, so I will be showing this side instead of both. So it's right here you can actually see some little vent details and I really thought those were going to be represented with Lego vent pieces as they have been in the past. However, those are actually plates kind of stacked up next to each other separated by one plate thickness and that just adds a crazy 3D vent detail that I think looks fantastic. Now on the side right above that you can see kind of this ladder looking area that looks super nice and I love that we're actually getting brick built 3D detail instead of some sticker going up over that area looking like a ladder but just kind of suggesting it. Now we can actually open up the sides and we'll take a closer look in the interior right now. Opening up the sides and yes you can actually open up all of the panels to a degree. Now the sides 
or sides for you guys over here, really the front and back can kind of open, but just to that point, if you try to open them further, they will break. But that is just because they have to be angled so that it looks right, not because it's supposed to be open. And you can actually open up the back, but we'll get to that in a bit. Now, to open up the sides, you just kind of push open from here. For you guys, it would be pull. And then you can also do it on the other side, making it so that you can see straight through it. And that is just awesome that you can get to the AT-AT through both of the sides. Now, inside, you'll see both of our little snow troopers sitting in there. There are two chairs on this side and three on my side. And it's really cool that you can fit five figures in here. And you can actually just take out all of those and have just an open cargo space. Or you can put in more chairs and have even more people in there. And I really like that they've just kind of kept the interior simple, so it's very customizable and easy to modify and switch back if you want. Taking a closer look at the little play feature, which you can see is this little wire right there. Now, if you open up this little flap at the top, you can actually move a little gear in there. And if you just kind of move it forward very slowly, you will see Luke's grapple gun come out of the bottom. Now, the reason I mention this is because at the bottom as well, you can actually see a little flap under there that you can open, and that is the little flap that Luke Skywalker in Empire Strikes Back cuts with his lightsaber and chucks a little thermal detonator in there. Now, there's not a complete passageway for the thermal detonator to go through, but it's a really cool suggestion, and I love that they've included that in this kit. Now, to bring it back up, you just kind of twist the gear on the other direction, and then it'll just kind of go back up into the body of the AT-AT seamlessly and it just looks great. Our next play feature is around the back. So right here, you just kind of flip up this flap at the back. And yes, there are a ton of doors that you can open up. And for better access, you can kind of spread these two little flaps right there. And we can actually bring down the entire back of the AT-AT to reveal a little Imperial kind of a snow speeder bike and it just looks really nice we'll take a closer look at that in a bit but that is a very very nice speeder build and it has its own little cubby with a little bit of extra space underneath of those little rails that it goes onto, and that just lets us put a little more cargo in the back of the AT-AT and we can even just flip those up and put those back and then flip everything down to transform it back to how it was and speaking of that closing the side door is also very easy, just as easy as opening them. You just kind of push them closed, and then we can close that back up to take a closer look at the feet. Moving on to the legs and feet of this AT-AT, you'll notice that they are in a different position, and that is thanks to this ratchet joint, and it actually has two of those on each leg, one here and one here. So we actually get quite a bit of posability at the knee joint and kind of the kind of pelvis joint or thigh joint and it just looks really cool and lets us have more playability and displayability and it just looks very very nice and works very nice now back here you can also see that it's actually just Technic beams supporting this entire thing and it's not like it's a very light model this thing has quite a bit of weight to it and it's pretty impressive to me that all of these little Technic pins with these Technic beams can actually hold up the weight of this thing just kind of shows the quality and strength of Lego. Now this piece is kind of shown as the linkage to the feet that is on all four and you can also see that it does indeed have a fourth toe. That's one thing I didn't know about the original AT-ATs is that they actually do have a fourth toe but they do indeed and it is shorter so that it doesn't clip the other one on the other side and those toes just look very nice and they also have this kind of hoop piece that you can see is actually just a little hinge and that lets us put the feet at different terrain options and makes it really nice and lets us also pose the legs more because of those tilting feet. That said, let's go on to our little speeder and eWeb cannon builds. Starting off with the little eWeb cannon, we actually see these in the Mandalorian TV show. Although the first time we ever saw it was in The Empire Strikes Back, some people don't really notice that but it is in the scene when the snowtroopers finally get into the Hoth base and the Millennium Falcon is trying to escape. Now, I think they've done an excellent job replicating it in the Lego. Now, my only complaint about this entire build is the little trans piece right here 
that is just kind of, it's a smoky gray, so it looks kind of black, but I wish it was just an actual black piece instead of a little bit clear, although it also kind of gives it the look of just having an actual tripod and not this little thing at the bottom. However, we do have this little kind of sight at the top represented with a roller skate and some little holes in the side, which I think is just kind of part of the Lego piece. Not really supposed to be an actual detail, but then we also have the iconic E-Web's little ring around the front, represented by what looks like a tiny little droid head, which is kind of funny. But then we also have the lightsaber hilt as a nozzle. Overall, I think that looks very, very nice. Moving on to our speeder bike, you can see that all of the black and white details look excellent. It just makes it look very clean, and I think this build is very, very nice. You can see that the front panels are at an excellent angle, and they are attached with these cool poles, and that kind of brings us to the little gun underneath. And then back here, we also have the little foot pedals of the speeder bike, which I wasn't expecting them to include. Now on the back, we also have this little tan piece, I think representing a little cargo bag. And the back is pretty clean, but I kind of wish that they had at least some kind of piece on there. And I kind of understand why they didn't, because they used the same pieces to attach this as are on the back. And I think it just looks very nice, and it's a very good side build. We also have these little handlebars. And to get our snow trooper on the little speeder bike, you just kind of move his arms and legs where they need to be. And you just kind of put him on there, like so. And then he is on the little speeder bike, and when you take him off, he's not going to lose his legs because there are only two studs attaching him. And then we can move on to our figures. Moving on to our figures, going from left to right, we have two AT-AT pilots, two snow troopers, one Luke Skywalker, and a General Veers, which looks excellent, and they actually all look excellent with very, very nice prints. Now, we'll start off with the two AT-AT drivers, and they have both of the same helmets, and all of their prints are the same, both looking very, very nice, and I believe these are the same as the Thai pilot helmets, and then at the back, they just don't have any printing, and they both have the same print, so I'll only show one, and he has a little bit of back printing there that looks very nice, and then their faces are actually different. Now, I thought this was very cool that LEGO did this because in the Star Wars universe, Stormtroopers, if you didn't know this, aren't clone troopers. So they are actually recruited people, much like the actual armies of our real world. And I think it's really cool that they actually gave them different faces instead of just a generic angry clone face. Now, with our snow troopers here, that is actually the same case. They both have different faces, which I'll show you in a little bit. And they both have the little blaster piece in front of them. I just put it in front of them so that I can move the figures better. But you can see the little blaster piece that is included. Now, their helmets look really cool, and they actually have kind of that face flap of the snow trooper and you can see that that actually continues around the side into the back some really cool back printing i thought it was pretty interesting that they didn't have a little backpack attached to the helmet like we have had with previous snow troopers this is my first snow trooper in a while so i may be crazy for thinking that they don't have a backpack is weird now the front has a very very nice detailed print and if we take off their helmets you can see that they do indeed have different faces Faces. Again, I think this is really cool and showing li little Lego Star Wars fans that it is cool that they have different faces because they are recruits, not clones. Moving on to Luke Skywalker, I've moved him into the middle so you can get a better look at him. You can see his helmet is very nicely printed as well as the front of his body is just very nicely printed with all of its tiny little details. And if we hold his helmet and move him around to the back, you can see his other face which is the visor down and you can also see the back of his flight vest. Now keeping him backwards, you can see his weapons are a very generic blue Lego lightsaber with the really old Lego pieces to represent that nothing's changed in a very long time now in front of him we also have a little Lego thermal detonator piece and that is just a circle with a very nice little print let's go on to general veers 
Last, but definitely not least, we have General Veers. His front print is pretty minimal, but very nice, and it's really all they had to include to make a very good General Veers figure. He has a front print on his face and actually a print on his helmet, which is also very nice. You can see in front of him is his little micro binoculars, and if we turn him around to the back, you can see the back of his torso print, and if we take off his helmet, you can see that his alternate face is a little more happy, maybe celebrating that he blew up the Rebel Shield Generator. That'll do it for the figures, and let's go on to the overview. Overall, I think this is a very fantastic kit. You get an Imperial Snowspeeder bike, two Snow Troopers, an E-Web Cannon, two at, -AT drivers, one General Veers, and a Luke Skywalker on a rope. Now, we also have the big dog, the at, -AT and in case you're wondering, that is about 14 inches tall and just over 15 inches long up to the guns. Now, if you want to pick yourself up one of these, you can check out the links in the description below. I'll also have some other Star Wars sets so you can go shopping and maybe get yourself a Christmas gift. That said, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, click that bell so you never miss a video, and check out this playlist, which is our Star Wars playlist, and this video, which is our most recently uploaded video. And I'll see you next time on Nuclear Fusion.